The jury of the Hackaday Prize 2021 awarded me 5th place for my direct granules extruder, thank you very much for that honor. While waiting for parts and machines that I ordered with the prize money from DigiKey and SupplyFrame, I started another 3D printer project. A printer for pasty materials. A source of inspiration was the Universal Paste Extruder, an open source project from Richard Horn. Like this one, my design also used syringes to squeeze out materials in a controlled way. In contrast to Richard's design, the piston of the syringe is not driven by a toothed belt, but by two threaded rods. The threaded rods prevent the piston from moving up again when the extruder motor is switched off, the system is self-locking. 3 gears on top of the cartridge ensure that both threaded rods move synchronously and thus press the piston down evenly. On the bottom there is a fourth gear... ...which fits on the pinion of the extruder motor as soon as the cartridge falls down along the 4 screws on the X axis bracket. With the cartridge you can use syringes with a capacity of up to 100ml. In principle there is, the smaller the diameter of the syringe, the easier it is to control the extrusion process, since less material is moved per millimeter of piston stroke. As raw material for the first experiments I mixed some dough. This consists of flour, sugar and sunflower oil. The recipe was not mixed with taste in mind, but to get the right consistency for printing with a syringe. Inserts can be printed for syringes with a smaller diameter. If the syringes are shorter than 13cm, an extra cylinder is inserted so that the piston can be pressed all the way down. Once the cartridge has been filled and put in place, printing can be started. In the current stage, the printer does not have a hot end, so the dough is extruded at room temperature. A Creality CR10S is used for printing. The Marlin firmware allows to move the extruder motor with the G-code command M302S0 even without a hot end. With the help of Trace to SCART, I imported a bitmap file into OpenSCART and then exported it as STL file. I then converted this data into G-code commands with Slicer. I enter 2mm as the nozzle diameter and 1.5mm as the extrusion width. The layer height in this experiment is also set to 1.5mm. The printing speed is quite low at 10mm per second, but due to the large extrusion width, the print doesn't take too long to finish. The syringe used has a maximum volume of 20 cubic centimeters. The CAD model of the Linux mascot Tux printed here has a total thickness of 3mm. I split the G-code file in half with a text editor so that the printing is interrupted after the first layer. The cartridge is then removed... ...and then reinserted with a freshly filled syringe. The second G-code file contains the data for the second layer. The holes for the tool change system are also located on the back of the cartridge, so an automatic tool changer can be implemented. If a drive gear is also attached to the second threaded rod on the back, the syringe could be refilled automatically, but that is still a long way off at the moment. I have added some melted chocolate to my recipe for the second layer to do a two color print.
With the chocolate, the dough becomes even more fluid, which makes it easier to extrude, but also causes the dough to keep flowing after extrusion. High structures cannot be printed with this material, it is a bit more like plotting than 3D printing. After about 15 minutes, the tux made of dough is finished. The still runny dough results in a nice, smooth surface. So cookie printing works with my syringe extruder. In the following experiments I played around with the printing parameters and the dough composition. Printing at 20mm per second also works quite well. Melted butter as a lubricant did not result in a nice and smooth print. At first a bit too much butter was pressed out of the extruder and later the dough become clumpy. When changing the cartridge, the lower layer on the baking paper should not be moved around, otherwise the print will fail. Here the recipe for the second layer has a higher viscosity, the dough is no longer fluid after it has been extruded. Engineers with a high affinity for chocolate can of course also print a North Pole Penguin. In the comments on my sugar experiment with my direct granules extruder, many suggestions for printable recipes were made that could be worth trying out. Many of them result in pasty materials such as fruit gums or caramel candies, which are difficult to process in an extruder designed for granules. With the syringe system, the variety of printable materials can be expanded. I'm working on a heatable syringe, so chocolate should also become printable. If you have any idea about what else could be printed with a syringe extruder, feel free to leave a comment. But don't expect me to test your ideas, you have to do that yourself. I don't accept the excuse, but I don't have a 3D printer, because all you need is a cheap disposable syringe. If you can squeeze out your recipe nicely by hand and thus make simple objects, tell us about your results, by video or with the help of photos. I do not run an entertainment channel, my mission is to share knowledge and to encourage other people to acquire new knowledge through their own initiative. One paste with which I will definitely carry out further experiments is clay, which I use here to print a structure by hand, printing ceramics in general is a chapter on its own. You can find the build instructions for my syringe cartridge and the basic recipe for the dough on my website, have a click. And if you are still too lazy for carrying out your own experiments, but would like to support me financially in my experimentations, you are welcome to click the donate button on my website. Many thanks to all the great people that already sweetened my research by sending me an obel. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.